We are here talking on futures with David Brown. Welcome. So what is your vision for the future, let's say in 2050? Well, I have written several novels set in that time frame. One of them was called Earth, that in 1988 it had web pages um, and it predicted the arrival of augmented reality glasses which would cover the world with information, um, which was a fairly new idea in 1988. Um, now, of course, we have Google Glass and we have the notion of augmented reality. Web pages are, of course, totally um, well known. And, of course, I'm mentioning a couple of predictions that were accurate, and there have been many that were not. It's not the job of a serious science fiction author to predict the future as much as it is to explore the future, to poke sticks in the path that we are running into because we are charging at very fast rate into the future. Change is the only constant of our century. And so the literature that explores change and asks the question, what if? What if this? What if that? Um, this is the reason why I am no longer so much a scientist as I was. I still do some science. But instead engage in this interrogation of tomorrow. And because it's an interrogation, I don't claim to know the answers. Uh, I don't know where we'll be. In my novels Earth and more recently Existence, I portray possibilities for the years 2038, 2040, 2050. One that is very frightening that may be coming true was considered ridiculous in 1988, and that is um, the world, especially the developing world, declaring a form of belligerence or war against the banking nations like Switzerland. Recently, this has become much more plausible, and people um, thought it was a very silly idea back then. But if you were um, a newly democratic developing nation, and you realized that your previous kleptocratic lords had stolen hundreds of billions of dollars that could feed the children and put in infrastructure for your nation, wouldn't you perhaps be a little bit angry? So these are the possibilities that are explored. Plausibilities, not predictions. In fact, the most powerful form of science fiction is science fiction that makes itself not happen. This is called the self-preventing prophecy. And the greatest self-preventing prophecies were 1984 by George Orwell. Uh, Fahrenheit 451 by my friend Ray Bradbury um, and some of the environmental science fiction stories that frightened people so much that millions dedicated them, their lives to preventing the story from coming true. It may very well be that Orwell and Bradbury prevented the, the scenarios that they predicted. I, I have probably not risen to that height. I have probably not prevented futures.